Hello brain lovers, Gregory here from the Brain Academy. Now, lately I've been watching and really enjoying The Queen's Gambit on Netflix. You know that series about chess? It's really well done. You see, the thing about that series is you don't need to know a single thing about chess to enjoy it because, well, it's really more a series about human nature than it is about chess. But having said that, the series did inspire me to share with you some insights about the game and this from a brain's perspective. <laughs> Chess is dope. I know, I know, at first glance, two people sitting in front of each other and staring at some small pieces on a board doesn't seem like much of an exciting experience, right? You don't suppose this is going to be like real Wizards of Chess, do you? But don't be fooled. What's happening in our brain during that staring includes some of the most exquisite brain activities we're capable of. So there are all kinds of benefits to the brain. We're talking short-term memory, long-term memory, transferability of skills to reading competences. It slows down cognitive decline and it improves creativity, problem solving, planning and foresight. It stimulates neuroplasticity, analytical skills and pattern recognition. And yet, I don't want to talk about all that today. You see, there is so much to discuss about chess. It's simple yet complex. There is so much to learn about it and so much to take into account. At one point, it becomes really beautiful, almost poetic. You play chess, I understand. How do you know? Oh. I know it from poetry and from old legends. And when you look at it from a brain's perspective, there is something really interesting happening. Well, you might be familiar with uh, Daniel Kahneman's fantastic book, Thinking Fast and Slow, right? Uh, the central idea of this book is that we have two ways of processing information. One is fast and automated, extremely efficient in familiar situations, but prone to biases and errors in unfamiliar situations due to the shortcuts it takes. Well, the whole point of it is to save energy as the brain is very demanding of it. The other one, the other way of processing information is slow and very energy demanding. It analyzes, weighs every option, takes time and effort. Now you see, chess is traditionally known as a typical slow thinking process activity, but it isn't, not exclusively at least. Well, for someone who just starts out at chess, it is a slow thinking activity. There's a lot of information and many variables to take into account. Would you like me to recommend your next move? But the more you play, the more you get used to the movement of the different pieces and slowly but surely you start to see patterns emerging, scenarios unfolding. And this is where it becomes interesting because the moment you start to recognize these, it means you've started the shift from slow thinking to fast thinking. All right. Better, yes. Come on, move. Your brain has started to automate processes and information in order to be more efficient. Yes, efficient. Our brain is a wonder of efficiency. It's the first rule of neuroplasticity, right? We become better at whatever we repeat and pay attention to. That's why in the Queen's Gambit, you see them play so fast, at least in the beginning of the game. They don't take the time to analyze the board and every single option available with every single implication of every single possible move. No, they just go for standardized scenarios. They know a whole list of scenarios by heart and how to play every single move and how the other player actually will react. They don't need to think about it anymore. And you can take that literally, actually. Fast thinking processes hardly activate any brain activity. It's very contradictory, I know, but real experts use their brain way less than amateurs or beginners. And that's true for any activity. So paradoxically, the better you become, the less you use your brain. So even though chess is a typical slow thinking activity, it is only through fast thinking processes that we're able to improve that we can grow from amateur to expert to true mastery. That's what we also see in the Queen's Gambit. At one point, we see how Beth Harmon struggles with fast chess. Her systems are not automated yet, but then she learns, she improves, she gets better. She spends countless hours studying games of chess legends, right? And it's only once she knows how to beat the other guys in fast chess that she reaches the proficiency to beat... Oh, um, spoiler alert. <laughs> so yeah, that she's able to beat the world champion. But do you see the beauty of this? When we see her playing super fast and beating these guys, we're in awe at her brain power. But the truth is, at that very moment, she's hardly using it, her brain power. It's like when you drive a car. You're not thinking about it anymore. You just drive. 
You see, just like that, chess in all its complexity is imitating life. I've met so many people marveling at our slow thinking process capacity, but to me at least, the truth is, our brains are made for specialization and we can only become better through automation, the fast thinking process. It's not one or the other, not one above the other, no, it's both complementing each other, playing the game of life and leading us to mastery. So don't forget to like and subscribe, check out some of our other episodes and if you want the real stuff, you go to brainacademy.com and join our 300,000 students and start using your brain better. Brain. Sharpen your mind.